Does anyone ever ask you, do you hate your sibling? Well, I hear it constantly, and my reply is always no. I would have to say that my nine-year-old brother, Sam, is one of my best friends. Now, you may find it odd, but one of the main reasons is because Sam is special ed, more specifically autistic, ADHD, and has Asperger's syndrome. This affected his reading and speech, causing him not to be able to talk until he was almost four. I am five years older than him and decided that I would be the best big sister in the world and teach him to read. Sam knew words that me and Mom would talk about, and his absolute favorite words were crust and cheese. He ate grilled cheese constantly. It was his favorite. Whenever we had it, and even when we didn't, he would ask me and Mom to spell crust and cheese for him. We would try to stay patient and reply for the 700th time in a row, C-R-U-S-T, C-H-E-E-S-E. Then he and I would go up to his big boy bed, and I would show him those letters, and also try to teach him more of the alphabet. It was very slow and frustrating work. Finally, one day after months of working and being ready to either punch him or pull out my hair, he came down to the kitchen and we prepared to be asked the usual questions. Sam walked over to the island and looked at the page of my homework. Then he picked it up and slowly, chunkily worked his way through the sentence, find the sum of the numbers. I swear my jaw must have hit the floor. My mom and I looked at each other in shock and then started freaking out. Sam's face just had this look of pure happiness that I will never forget. Teaching Sam to read was a long and tedious effort, and many times I wanted to just give up and storm out of the room. I'm glad I did not. This whole time in my life pushed me to keep working at something, even when it takes a lot of time and effort, because it will be worth it all in the end. My heart was pounding. I swear you could hear it from miles around. I peeked my eyes out slightly from behind the heavy blue curtain as a voice boomed down at me, Allie Landy. Slowly, I pushed my shoulders back and tilted up my chin. I stepped confidently out onto the stage with the heavy lights beating into my eyes. Hello, my name is Ali Landy and I will be singing Rainbow Connection. I managed to breathe out as I reached center. For a moment, I thought I had forgotten my lyrics, but suddenly they all tumbled out one after the other, strung together in a perfect poem of emotion. I gasped for breath as my last note came to a close and I managed to get out a good thank you before I tripped off stage. Finally, my best friend stumbled out, looking the way I felt. We quietly walked out the doors to catch our rides, barely saying a word. It was very unlike us to be caught silent in each other's company. An eternity later, two days to be exact, the cast list was posted. I remember the sinking in my heart as my eyes slowly made their way down the list of my classmates' names. After jostling to see the tiny print, I found a small Allie Landy directly next to the word Cheshire Cat. My heart dropped to my feet, for I wanted to be Alice in Wonderland so bad. However, I soon realized how happy I was just to get in, because it was so cutthroat, and to be such a well-known character. This experience taught me to always look on the bright side of things, and to never be disappointed with what curveballs life throws at you. No, no, you were supposed to be done yesterday. I was curled up in the corner of my near-empty house, sobbing as my mom screamed at Martin the head movie. He had made the mistake of yelling back, it isn't our fault that one of his sons couldn't make it in the last two days, he had another job. My mom then came into the former dining room where I was curled up and said, Go out to the car. I'll be there in a while. I was convinced that we would never leave. Also, I was afraid that if we did leave, we would crash our car because it was so late. My mom finally came out at 11 p.m. and she said she locked the movers outside with all our stuff and left the outdoor lights on. I was scared that the movers would leave our belongings outside and disappear after mom got in a fight with Martin. When Mom, Sam, and I finally arrived at our beach house, it was midnight and we were all exhausted that we fell into beds without packing anything from the car except the cooler. We had all been crying and we expected to be there around 5 p.m. or earlier because they said it would be done before I got home from school and we leave when Sam got home from his last day of second grade. A month and a half later, on August 15th, I was shaken awake at 5.15 by Mom, telling me over and over to wake up and get dressed, wake up and get dressed. Our plane was coming at 7.30. My dad was with us for the last week at the beach to get on the plane with us to go to Colorado, although he had been working there for six months and we could barely ever see him. We Skyped him every weekend and he called us every night. We had cleaned up my room the night before because we would not be back until next summer. Going through security and boarding the plane was a blur, although I do remember it was rather empty at the airport, seeing as it was so early. I slept through the plane ride and even though it was four hours, we landed at 11 in Colorado. Dad's car was at the airport apartment he stayed at for the last six months, so we got a rental. We drove for maybe a half hour, it all blurred together with the surreality of the all, and we finally pulled into our huge neighborhood unlike anything in Boston. When we finally turned into Bel Air Court, 
We pulled in front of a whitened stone house. I could not believe it was possibly ours. As soon as the car pulled into the driveway, I sprinted out. Our possessions were everywhere, and even though the house was crowded with boxes, it was amazing. Thinking back on it now, I realize making all the sacrifices and everything has made me a stronger person and made me realize I am braver than I thought I was.